Greetings once again, one and all, uh, for yet another series of My Artsy Musings. And uh, those of you who have been following me for, for the duration um, of My Artsy Musings have, uh, would know that I, that, that I haven't before um, dabbled in any real wildlife stuff. So um, this is going to be the start of it. So uh, and today we are, we are starting a, a wildlife piece um, and it is of a lion and it's, but it's a particular lion um, and I'm going to get into that. So, so basically what the story is, is that I was, I've been following um, a YouTube channel called um, um, the Kevin Richardson, AKA the, the lion whisperer. And um, I really enjoyed watching his videos and, and some of the stuff he shares and black leopards and lions and hyenas and whatnot. Um, and, uh, but the, the, the one, the one particularly poignant, um, video that he shared was of, uh, uh, uh in remembrance of a lion by the name of, uh, Siam and, uh, and, and just after his passing, and so this this piece is in remembrance also of of Siam because it was very touching and and uh, it obviously become a very integral part of Kevin's life and the 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 the, the wildlife sanctuary etc. So um, here we are um, having a go at a at a, at a at a at a wildlife piece. So uh, uh, let's make the most of it, shall we? Right, let's get get going and um, I'll chat to you along the way as I normally do so I, I've already established a, a very skeleton rough skeleton uh, sketch uh, positioning etc um, of the of the uh, composition and uh, yeah so we take it forward from there it's going to be a fairly straightforward piece in that there's not a lot of not a great deal of ha happening in the background it's quite a it's quite a uh, again following the the, the 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 mood that came to me through the video it's quite a sort of poignant pose uh with siam staring off into the into the yonder um and perhaps because of the because of his positioning with regards to the composition uh, he's come into the he's come into the image uh, he's come into the frame um and then he stopped he's paused because he sensed something and he's now staring off into the into the yonder. So yeah, that's what that, that's what this is about, um, and we take it forward from there. So right, I'm going to start with some uh, where if I can find it, some uh, charcoal just to get a this sort of basically put this background together a little bit, just a just a horizon line really. Um, kind of indicating the, uh, the plains that is the lion's preferred habitat, the bushveld. And just accentuating that, uh, that gaze that just goes through to the d d distant horizon. Um, So, so just bush felt scrub. Um, pretty much long grass, very dry looking, etc. Now I'm going to be kind of just illustrating this, this uh, very dry twig like uh, shrub that is sort of posed behind him, uh, kind of almost giving him a little bit of a halo. Mm. I did, on Kevin's video, I did, uh, I did send a, a message on there or a comment rather, just requesting um, his go ahead to to do this 
to do this artwork. Um, never responded in uh, in writing. Well, in in a comment, but you did like the you did like my comment, so I, I take that as a yes. <laughs> um, It is just an exercise in any case, and uh, and should he wish, I I would like I would love to donate this this the completed artwork to to his to Kevin Richardson's foundation, um, Wildlife Foundation. Well, sorry, Wildlife Sanctuary, because uh, yeah, because I know I I guess it would have. A great deal of meaning to him. I'm not looking to gain any any uh, traction really out of this out of the process, other than perhaps some people will watch uh, watch my watch my videos, maybe get a few more likes, a few more subscribers. I don't know. Who knows? Um, those of you who do know me and my work um, already know that uh, that that these sessions are predominantly primarily for my own development that's why i call them my artsy musings because i'm doing a lot of musing <laughs> during the process um and oh talking of lions here's my little panther um <laughs> here's little finn come to come to visit us hey finn finny kinini hey how about that come to say hello there's, a, there's another big big cat on the on the go here Anyway, take care, see you later, be good. Um, no, put this down. Yeah, so it's really just a, you know, uh, as I said, as I mentioned, I haven't really been one who's been inspired by wanting to do uh, um, wildlife art per se. Um, there are millions and millions and millions of people doing it. But then again, there's also millions of people doing seascapes. So, um, and animal portraits and so on and so forth. So, I guess I was, I was, what, obviously the video Kevin put up there um, did inspire me to do this. I mean, it, it more than inspired me. I just, it was kind of a, a calling. <laughs> Um, and not to say that I will start getting into wildlife art per se, I might or might not, depends which way the wind blows. Um, so I was, I had been busy doing a number of portraits. Um, I'd started with a, somebody's German Shepherd and I'd done Kit Kat I think. And then I did one of Sage, and then I did one of Little Finn. Um, I'm still to do another of Wendy's Husky Coda, amongst others. And I want to do another one of Kit Kat as well, actually. So I've been doing a fair amount of portraiture, animal portraiture, in the recent videos, in my recent videos. So uh, I thought, oh, what the hell. <laughs> Let's just, let's just take a stab at this for a change. Yeah, why not? If not, why not? So, so that's the deal. Cockatiel. Um, yeah, so it, it, again, you know, it, purely because I believe that art is all about passion. Um, art is about, is about emotion, about feeling. Um, one has to, uh, you know, I cannot um, do something that I'm not actually passionate about. So it's even when I, if I receive a commission, um, I get passionate about about it. I become involved in the character or the or the scene or uh, whatever it is that I'm about to tackle because without the passion. It, 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 it's a it's it's kind of I feel it's dead it doesn't have a it doesn't have a doesn't tell a story I think that's the most important thing it doesn't needs to tell a story and if you're not 
if you're doing it for um, I don't know um, if you're doing it for the money then there's little point now anyway it does it just doesn't it, 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 it has point but it doesn't have it doesn't have that necessarily soul to it that it doesn't tell a story it's just it's just a means to an end and uh, I mean goodness me if you can imagine who was it Michelangelo did it doing the Sistine Sistine Chapel was it was it Michelangelo yes I forget I, d I didn't pass history of art um, you know that has to take a significant amount of passion never mind the fact that that, 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 that he was commissioned to do it I mean he's he really toiled I mean you it's obviously whether it's a pride in your in your work excuse the pun um, um, or whether it's just that feeling of irrespective of the fact that I'm that I'm here now instead of illustrating a, 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 a lion um, yes, it's, yes, he's a lion, but it's a particular lion, and 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 through the video, Kevin's video, I managed to get a uh, derive a passion from it. Uh, it, it, it called me, uh, you know. Otherwise, I would never have done it. I would have just gone, okay, well, another another wildlife video, great, fantastic. I do enjoy them, enjoy watching them. Never, never really was enthused to to illustrate however this is different because now i've realized that i became sort of quite passionate about this boy and his life so i am um and yeah i'd like to just give him a send-off of my own even though i've never never had the privilege of meeting Siam or any of his brethren. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, it's more about that. It's, it's, it, it, there's more about it for me. It's about now I'm feeling that energy of, of being there in the, in the wild, African plains. Um, yeah, that whole sense of stillness of quiet the odd bird call um, those long distant distant copies and the thorn trees or the acacia um, the dryness the insects the sound of the cicada all of that is summed up for me in this particular piece. Um, as I as I get busy with it. And that's what I that's the feeling that I derive from it. And hopefully that will translate into into a story, a telling. Uh, just as any any artwork or piece of music needs to tell a story, gives it gives it relevance. Many of you might say, "Ah, stick to the seascapes or whatever," but uh, yeah, it's not about that. It's just about I I'll do what speaks to me, and this. This magnificent guy speaks to me. And this video was posted a few weeks ago, but, uh, but nevertheless. Um, just really roughly setting out the the layout of this piece well the layouts in place but uh,
just getting it going, getting the getting the uh, the very basics of of light and shade on the go. Um, yeah, so nothing hectic, nothing earth shattering, no major development. Just bringing this. Bringing this piece slowly, slowly together, it kind of creates itself, as I always maintain. Just building up some substance in the charcoal. Uh, we might get to do a little bit of uh, white quante work with highlights, etc. I will consider during the course of this series, whether or not I'm going to color the sky. I don't know, I don't know. I, it's one of those, maybe, maybe not <laughs> scenarios. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm just gonna have fun with it. I do think that I shall be Putting, colouring his mane, his his pelt a little bit. I don't know. We'll see that too. I don't know. Maybe we just we might even just keep it as a as a as a black and white. Well, the uh, the paper, this Daham that I use and I love to use with all of my work. Especially for the well, especially for the charcoal and chalk pastel works, which constitutes ninety nine percent of my of my artworks. Um, it's a kind of a it's a kind of a grey, we off wheaty colour, so it kind of lends itself in this case to the to the surroundings to the landscape. Just build up the uh, contrasting contrast integrity of the piece. So the light catches is catching him, you know, not quite square on, but just coming in from from just to his to his left. Um, let's say he's, let's say the sun is, is catching him from the east. Um, he's facing sort of east, southeast for argument's sake. Um, so he does have a little bit of cast shadow going on down here. Um, but of course it's dissipated by the, it's not a hard line because it's dissipated by the, by the grass and whatnot all around. And the grass tufts themselves are casting shadow in this early morning light. I will admit that um, I need, obviously I needed reference of some form, um, visual reference for me to, to, to as a guideline. So I, I took and please forgive me, Kevin, but I took screenshots from your video, <laughs> your uh, video um, that you, that you did. Speaking of of Siam, and uh, I took a number of screenshots, and from that, I uh, decided what kind of angles that I wanted, etc. And I have a, have a reference illustration with me that I refer to, hence the name. So constantly sort of cross hatching, shading, just working this charcoal, working it up a little bit. I'll be smudging it, I'll be using my eraser a great deal because 
when I, I, I actually realized that, the, that my eraser was fantastic as a tool for, for especially for grassland, <laughs> you know, um, really seems to work well. So, to begin with, however, um, I need another, oh, there's one, slightly thicker one. You notice I'm, I'm kind of leaving him for the moment. There's a little bit of an outline, and I'll start to work on him shortly. Just getting some... Nice contrast going here to begin with. I'm not sure how many sessions this will take. Um, maybe two, maybe three, I don't know. However long it takes is how long it takes. So, for those of you who would like to also follow um, Kevin's YouTube channel, um, you can find him as the, the Lion Whisperer. Um, go have a look. Wonderful stuff. Really, really, excuse the pun, down to earth um, kind of delivery. Nice. Um, homely kind of videos they they really are engaging on a on a on a on a real level you know nothing contrived just kind of having fun with these creatures I, I just blessed a blessed life lifestyle but um, also in a humble way I, I, and I particularly enjoy that kind of expression I, I guess it was kind of more that that also drew me to watching his channel in the first place, following his, following his stuff. Again, I'm not one for necessarily watching loads and loads and loads of wildlife videos on YouTube, etc. Um, quite the contrary. Um, sometimes they're a dime a dozen and a little bit sort of the same old, same old. But for some reason, I came across Kevin's channel, one of his videos. I think I think it was actually the uh, the, the, the the black leopards, um, and I just became quite engrossed. And then I was sharing it with Wendy, and then we were both watching, and just yeah. So <laughs> that's how it's, that's how it came about. Um, yeah, easy watching and, 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 and intriguing and interesting. The information and, and uh, you know, about these creatures and their habitats, uh, their, their, their idiosyncrasies, their particular characteristics. Magnificent. All of them. Uh, I, I, you know, whether it's the hyenas or the, the lions or the leopards, just wonderful. Gosh, makes you yearn for the bush. And Kevin's um, wildlife sanctuary is um, is on. Uh, is, is situated in sort of in the Cullinan, Cullinan area in Kauteng, um on Valkadacht Private Game Reserve. 
Um, in the Bobby Arnsberg area, in the farm. Straddles the uh, Brückenhoutspreit River. Yeah, I have. Um, it kind of reminds me of, in a way, <laughs> I don't know why, but. Yeah, um, whenever I see videos of the bushveld up this up this way, um, it's kind of just uh, sort of north northeast of Pretoria, um, sort of towards Limpopo. And I was in Pelabora in the army a few decades ago, and some um, closing in on forty years ago, and. Uh, And that was a Pelabora, but spent a lot of time in the surrounding region of Limpopo, um, even up as far north as Messina. And the northern parts above the, 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 the northernmost reaches of the Kruger National Park. So lots of, lot of time in the bush, lots of experiences in the bush, nothing like what these uh, privileged conservation peeps have though but yeah it is there is a there is a particular quality of of life and lifestyle to to this kind of living eh? very very privileged and obviously people from all over the world flock to these places um, to get some of that experience of the African the African scene, experiencing real Africa in the bush, and what reason not to, I ask, with tears in my eyes. One day I'd like to head up that way again. I was just saying to Wendy, you know, we, we were saying we should one of these days do a kind of a road trip, and I'd like to, I'd like to head out to uh, go and pop in at Pelabora once again to to uh, jolt my memories of army days, but also head out to uh, oh. Um, obviously Hootsprite, that kind of area. Um, it's a neat, beautiful area as well. Um, up along towards maybe Trichart, maybe even as far north as Messina. See the Baobabs. That would be a trip and a half. There's no waves out there, there's no ocean, but hell, something uh, on my bucket list. How are we doing for time? About 15 minutes left. All right, I think I shall start working a little on Siam's frame. A very, very, very handsome line and I forget, I must, I must double check, I must watch that video again, how, how old Kevin said he was. Um, was it 25 years? Was it 15 years? I forget now. I really, yeah, forgive me. So um, I must just double check on that, but he had a really good, 18 years comes to mind. I don't know. Anyway, he had a very good full life, but still in magnificent shape. This gorgeous, gorgeous, dark mane, 
tawny mane. Um, yeah, quite a magnificent character. I would have loved to have seen him in the flesh. So, oh, what a beast. Beautiful specimen. And, um, and you could see just from the video what a beautiful soul he was too. Ah. Yeah, good strong body. I mean, you know, I've obviously lines of strong bodies, but he's, he's, some of them can be a little bit sort of gaunt looking. But uh, yeah, he's got this. He's got a really powerful build as well. Quite sort of stockyish. But obviously, obviously the big the cats. Mostly, most cats are quite narrow. I mean, if you look at them from the top, they're quite narrow, and the head is wide. Um, I just wanted to here we've got a we've got a, a nice side profile nice sort of almost three side three quarter angle profile um actually yes i am going to put in some colors i'm going to put in some lovely dawn type colors the yellows and the golds oranges yeah there we go Um, as always, I need to take particular attention to his face, so I'll, I'll kind of leave that for later on in the proceedings. I don't want to uh, start making it look strange. And it'll just come, it'll just develop. As it's meant to. I uh, will accentuate highlights and so on as as the as time goes by and Getting him nicely, nicely on the go. He just seemed like such a likable character. You know, you just get sometimes these animals that just got such a. They're all wonderful, but sometimes you just get this, and and I guess that's what really did it for me was just. This wonderful, gentle character that that just that seemed to he seemed to ooze with um, hell, and that's what I really would like to try and to try and pick up on here. It's his gentleness. A lion's a lion, but and it, and there is a there is a certain majesty to to, to the to them in any case, but. With uh, with Siam, there's a there's a gentleness that I'd like to try and to try and bring through as well, if I can. So, with his body, it's going to be a quite a subtle build-up of tone, tonal value. Um, just try and also, once again, trying to capture that that uh, his tail also comes out here somewhere. Anyway, um, 
just to try and capture that feeling of his fur it's obviously to touch is kind of kind of coarse but but also kind of smooth as well so just to show his sort of the sides of his chest his back the musculature of his legs I mean, even this, this mane is just magnificent. It even hangs down between his legs, um, across the bridge of his chest. Mag Wonderful, absolutely marvelous. Um, yeah, so it kind of caught me by surprise when I said to myself, I I'm, go I'm going to do a, 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 this is my first wildlife piece. I've been almost, I've been very hesitant before just because, ah, uh, you know, it's like okay. well, another wildlife artwork. Some people will say you can't get enough, but uh, anyway, this came and, and took me swept, me, swept me up. So I guess I have to give thanks to Kevin for stimulating that, that, uh, that need I actually took loads of screenshots from that from that video I, I, and I, it took me a while to, to work out that this this kind of this particular pose and positioning was the right one to use um, I do have others I do have close-ups of his face and yeah I might even get to, to do some of those as well in time and I thought this one was just the that epitome of proudness and stateliness of of a, a typical lion. This tree up here. I, I did say I wouldn't sort of put, start putting it in until towards the end, but actually, you know, I'm not. I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm still undecided as to whether I'm going to put the sky in, and I want to, if I do put the sky in, then I want to do it as one solid um, kind of vignetted approach. So uh, let's just leave that for the moment for me to ponder over. So, obviously, from what you might have gathered, um, the uh, Kevin Richardson Wildlife Sanctuary does look after animals, care for them, rehabilitate them. I suppose occasionally let them back into the wild. Um, otherwise, just providing a, a home for them on, on this huge game reserve um, where they can basically continue in their natural habitat not in a zoo for goodness sake 
one thing I cannot abide. I guess, I don't know, it's been something that has prevented me from... Oh, I, I, I just get so sad sometimes when you, when you see how these magnificent creatures, all of them, are sometimes treated by humanity. We are taken, uh, yeah, and, and at, 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 at best taken for granted. So from an emotional perspective, I oh, struggle to get involved. This is obviously not a huge piece. Um, I was considering whether I should do it the double size, the full, the full sheet size, uh, but uh, that would have just taken too long. I, I really want to make this a, a nice sketched tribute, and I've become accustomed to this, to the size of um, image area. Couple of minutes left today for the session, and uh, I think we've done almost enough. Right, folks, I think we're about done for today's session. continue doing the next session on and on right all right there's a start to my first pucker wildlife artwork <laughs> um happy that finn popped in because the last few videos i don't think any of the kitties have, have have come to visit but um i'm glad that they did glad that finn did anyway um so yes Thank you for watching and uh, and uh, if you're new to my channel then do hit the subscribe button if you like what you see and the, the bell icon to be notified of any future uploads and uh, do like share and by all means comment I always welcome any any comments that I might receive and uh, it's fantastic and it helps my channel to grow a little bit as well so uh, yeah, please do um, in the meantime I bid you a fantastic day further <laughs> be good be kind be gentle be caring be loving etc etc so i bid you oodles and oodles of toodles see you again bye and don't forget to doodle <laughs>